Hey, welcome. This is part two of our introduction to magnetism. So right now we're going to be talking about what's up with magnetic domains and cool phenomena or applications that are related to magnetic fields like auroras and how I understand people really want to colonize Mars, but that's probably never going to happen. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, you could say, why does the Earth behave like a magnet? So we talked about that last time. The answer is there is a material that's naturally magnetic. We'll talk about why that is, and that's iron. And the outer core of the Earth, which is labeled as number four right here, has a lot of liquid iron in it, which actually produces a large magnetic field enough to protect the Earth, believe it or not, from the solar wind. So harmful rays from the sun are constantly coming into the Earth and getting deflected by this magnetic field. It's like a shield for the Earth. And it's actually believed that this is one of the core crucial requirements for life, most likely, or at least life on the surface of a planet. Let me show you a picture of what I'm talking about. So this is called the magnetosphere. So this is the magnetic field around the Earth, and you have harmful rays coming in from the sun, and those rays get deflected because of the magnetic field of the Earth. Now, they don't get completely deflected. Some of those come in where the magnetic field lines of the Earth come out of the Earth. So this solar wind can come in at this angle and interact with our atmosphere. And that's what an aurora is. So it's actually fascinating stuff. By the way, this is an artist's rendition, and it's not to scale. But it's enough to give you an idea of what's going on. So these highly charged particles are coming in here. They're slipping through the magnetic field. They interact with our atmosphere. And as they do so, you see beautiful colors flash across the night sky. Amazing stuff. All right, let's talk briefly about the cause of magnetic domain. So there's a property of electrons found in atoms, and that is their spin. So it's kind of like you can imagine a spinning top spinning in one direction or another, although everything with quantum physics or on the level of chemistry actually gets really complex. So the model isn't perfect, but we can just say for now it's kind of like this. And what you have is you normally have two electrons fill the same orbital. If you've had chemistry, you've heard that before. And that would be the angular momentum of this electron cancels out the angular momentum of that electron, which is right next to it. So you could say like a spin up, spin down, they will cancel each other out. And in most atoms, you have a very balanced set of electrons, like maybe you have one extra electron that's unbalanced. And so there's no real significant spin of an electron that could create a tiny magnetic field. So these spinning electrons actually create their own magnetic fields because there's a very deep connection between electricity and magnetism. Well, it turns out that in iron there are four unpaired electrons, and as a result of that, there is a significant magnetic field for each iron atom. And if you have trillions upon trillions of these atoms together in an iron compound like iron ore or something, then they can add together the vectors of their magnetic fields and end up with an overall vector. They can actually become a magnet. Now these collections of atoms have a name. These collections of atoms are called magnetic domains. So a magnetic domain is a collection of atoms that can be magnetized, like iron, let's say, and they have a magnetic field with all the same vectors for the individual magnetic atoms that will have a individual vector themselves. So it's like a collection of magnetic fields for each of the atoms that are all pointing in the same direction. That would be what we mean by a magnetic domain. If you apply an external magnetic field that's strong enough to something like iron, and sometimes you can help it along if you heat it up, then over time those magnetic domains can break down and they can all start to point in the same direction. So this over here, if they're pointing in random directions, this is going to be an unmagnetized piece of iron, let's say. But if you apply a magnetic field long enough and maybe heat it up a little bit and then let it cool down once it's all in the same direction, you essentially have a magnetized piece of iron. So all of the little vectors for the magnetic fields all end up pointing in the same direction and then they add together. They sort of reinforce each other and that's what forms a magnet. All right, let me show you an animation of this. This is where a magnetic field, a strong magnetic field, is being applied to an unmagnetized piece of iron at the beginning of the animation and then the magnetic domains are getting smaller and smaller until you have this effect over here where they're all essentially together. All of those magnetic field lines, those little magnets you could say, are all pointing in the same direction forming a big magnet. 
All right, and this is just a beautiful picture of an aurora out from Alaska. And this is solar winds that's coming in and interacting with our atmosphere. Pretty amazing and beautiful. Oh, and here's another look, another look at that that's actually easier to see what's going on. So you have the solar wind coming in, and this is where the magnetic field of the Earth comes out straight, essentially, from the Earth. Not completely, but close to straight from the surface of the Earth. And so that solar wind can get funneled in and interact with our atmosphere towards the far northern or far southern latitudes. So this is the aurora borealis up here. The aurora for the southern hemisphere has a different name. So at this point, you can understand the problem of what I want to talk about with colonizing Mars, and that is this. Mars does not currently have a significant magnetic field, hasn't had for a very, very long time. And as a result, what happens is the solar winds, these high energy particles come in from the sun and just slam into Mars. And what that does is over hundreds of millions or maybe even billions of years to strip the atmosphere off of Mars. Now that does a number of things, makes it impossible to breathe, but it also makes the planet really, really cold. It's so cold that dry ice sits on the planet and we're thinking about how to unlock that dry ice. That's really cold if it's just sitting on the surface there. Additionally, let's say magically some astronauts could just walk on the surface, even without a spacesuit, and just breathe and be totally fine, even though that's all impossible. They would probably be dead within like three years because of the harmful solar rays from the sun. That radiation just goes through and causes tons of mutations in DNA, eventually leads to all kinds of problems. So it's important for us to get off this planet. It's definitely our long-term goal as a species, but we really have to take care of our home. Our home is truly special, and if we don't take care of our planet, then we will certainly never be able to get off this planet. I'll put a link down below if you want to learn more about what it would take to terraform Mars. Because there's a lot of cool science in there, but the take-home message, unfortunately, is it's absolutely unrealistic. Oh, and there's one more important concept we need to go over before we finish this, and that is what happens if you break a magnet? What do you think would happen if we were to break this essentially in the middle here? Well, what's going to happen is you will break the magnet up into two smaller magnets, essentially. You cannot get a magnetic monopole over here. You wouldn't get just a south here and a north here. And the reason is, is because the magnetic field is actually caused by this interaction of the north side and the south side of the magnet. It's like saying you can't have a top of an object without having a bottom of an object. They essentially go together. In any case, hopefully this has been helpful. We're going to be talking about more topics in this unit and other units in physics, so please stick around and watch those. If you have any comments below, please let me know. Hope you all have a great day. Take care.